Hello, how are you going? My name is Sam and you're watching another Core Electronics video and today we're going to be taking a look at how breadboards work. Now, what is a breadboard? First of all, a breadboard is this plastic piece of prototype equipment I have here. Now, why is it called a breadboard? Well, originally when people wanted to prototype circuits, they would take a physical wooden board, often used for slicing bread, uh, hammer some nails into it and solder components to those points to make a circuit. But now, of course, we have what's known as the solderless breadboard, and it's fantastic. Almost every electronics project starts out at the breadboarding stage. Now, how does it work? A lot of people see this grid of holes and you know endless places you can put things. You get a bit confused, and that's understandable. It can be a little bit of a mind shift when you're uh, when sort of transferring a circuit from a schematic or a design to a breadboard because it takes a little bit of getting used to how to lay it out. But don't worry, we're going to take a look at that today. Now, a breadboard is a plastic board with 0.1 inch or 2.54 millimeter spaced holes, and that's a standard unit of measurement for electronic components. IC chips, uh, capacitors, and things like that will often be designed to fit into 0.1 inch. Um, millimeter spaced holes and so we can see I've got an LED and a resistor here and they just go in the legs and you insert them into the holes like this and underneath are metal strips with little uh, sort of spring-loaded V-shaped contacts and when you push a component leg in there it forces itself in between the contacts and the spring holds it together and it makes a electrical connection and on the breadboard I'll take this resistor out as well you can see there's these rows and we've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, so on and so forth. Anyway, there's 10, uh, 10 across with this divider in the middle. Now, on the breadboard, you've got these holes here. Now, there's five across this way and in these rows. And they're electrically connected in this orientation, like that. So you, it's also numbered one down to 30. So this is a smaller breadboard. It's a half size breadboard. You can get bigger ones. You can get three breadboards lined up together. You can get, get even smaller ones than these. And this features power rails as well, which we'll get to in a minute. But anyway, so to put, to connect something up, you would put something in this hole. So this LED, for example, let's insert him there. All right, cool. Now this component leg is connected to that row of holes. Now if I want to connect something to it, I could take a jumper wire, which is designed to work specifically with breadboards, put it in any of these four remaining holes, and it's going to make a connection because they're connected this way. Now this divider is an isolator uh, against these rows, so these five are not connected to those five, and there's nothing connected along this orientation, this axis. So let's make a simple circuit. I've got an Arduino board here I'm just using to get a, some five volts to the board and I'm going to connect it up to these power rails here. Now these uh, operate slightly differently. Differently, sorry. They're connected along this orientation here. So all of your negative uh, pins on the ground rail are connected to each other and then they're isolated from the positive rail here. Now this is useful for putting voltages on your board, you use it to supply your project with electricity. So, I've got a positive rail and a negative rail. So let's take this, I'm gonna plug my ground wire into the board and my five volts up into the board. Alrighty, now be careful not to short these out because they will short out your board. I'm going to connect the black wire to the negative terminal, the positive wire to the positive terminal. And now I have power all along those rails on my breadboard. Important to note that they're not connected to this side as well. So you can have say 3.3 volt uh, rail on one side and a five volt on the other side or 12 volts or however you wanna work it or you can bridge them across to have the same uh, continuous power supply across both rails. Now let's connect up a really simple circuit, LED and a resistor. I'm going to connect the positive leg of my LED up to, up to, the, uh, to the power rail and the negative leg over to another pin. Now I'm going to take a resistor, this is a 220 ohm resistor and is a good value for limiting the current and hence brightness to our LED to make sure it doesn't burn out. 
and I'm putting the resistor in there with one leg connected to the same row as the leg of the LED and the other one over here. And I'm going to take another one of these jumper leads and insert it here. And when I, now I want to connect it to ground, it lights up. Fantastic, and that is an extremely simple circuit put on a breadboard, which is fantastic. Now, these breadboards sound, you know, all well and good, but what are some of the drawbacks to them? Well, there's a couple, namely that they're temporary connections. They're not soldered connections. They're solderless, which means anyone can put components in and create a circuit. But if you've got quite a big project you're working on, multiple breadboards and jumper wires going everywhere, you can find you have intermittent connections because if the component leg is really thin, it might not have enough force to make a really reliable connection with the spring-loaded contacts underneath. It might uh, be, you know, be a bit intermittent and things like that, which is not what you want. It can be easily bumped or dropped and your circuit is going to fall apart, and that's, that's not good either. So soldering is definitely something like, you know, a prototyping board, strip board, vero board is going to be a much more reliable method for prototyping, but for testing out circuits, a breadboard is perfect. You will find, however, that breadboards have the issue of capacitance. Now, a capacitor, if you do remember, if you've read our electronics crash course, uh, analog electronics crash course tutorial, a capacitor is two conductors separated by an insulator, and that is exactly what the pins on a breadboard are. Now, it's very small capacitance, so small you will barely notice it on most projects, but for, you know, high frequency, uh, really specific RF, circuits, they don't recommend that you test it with a breadboard because each pin can have up to five picofarads on it. Now that's not a lot. Pico is a very, very small unit of measurement, but in high frequency, high speed designs, that is enough to throw off the timing of a signal. So something to be aware of. Now the breadboard is, it is great. Don't get me wrong. It's fantastic. But if I were to have a design, I would breadboard it first. And then once I know that the circuit works, I would trans transfer it to a, a soldered prototyping method, like you know some strip board or prototyping board, something like that. So it's just something to be aware of. And the last thing is that the current rating on them is not high. You can only put about five watts of energy across one of the breadboard uh, terminal strips. Now, what does this mean? If you're working on a five volt project, you can draw up to one amp on the metal connectors underneath the breadboard before they start to get too hot and may melt the plastic. So if you short something and you're drawing lots of, you know, lots of current, you could potentially melt your breadboard, so they're not recommended for high power designs either. So hopefully this has given you a good, you know, insight onto how breadboards work. You can connect resistors, LEDs, capacitors, integrated circuits, they're designed to be straddled across there because it's a standard spacing. You can connect all of these components up to the breadboard to create your circuit and your project. It's fantastic. So I would encourage you guys to check out some of the sizes available. I recommend a full size breadboard and a half size breadboard for different projects to have on hand. You can connect them up. They have these little tabs on the side that you can uh, snap them alongside each other. They're fantastic. Get your hands on a couple. They're super cheap. And that's all for today, guys. Thanks for watching.